everyone, Pedro with Cinemill here, and I'm really fortunate to be at Radiant Images, and they let us sort of pull a couple of cameras and lenses and test out the new Ronin 2. And um, sort of the general idea behind today is really just to see how far you can push this Ronin 2. And because, um, you know, the arms grow and it has a really big pan motor. And personally, this is really where I wanted to really explore uh, the Ronin 2 and see how well it can do. Because frequently we're asked to run really big lenses while you may not be running an Alexa um, XT or, you know, or something like this, you may be running a, an Epic or an Airy Mini with a zoom lens and a matte box and filters in there and lens motors. So, you know, it can sort of approximate what we're going on here. But the real, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to really sort of push the limits and um, see where we run into problems and uh, kind of get into that a little bit more and really sort of push the Ronin 2 and see how well it can do with a really heavy, long payload like this. So of course you see here, I'm already sort of balanced. I'm, I'm actually, my axes are locked, but um, I roughed it in here before we started um, just to see if we were even gonna be able to do this. And surprisingly, we were. And as you can see here, we got a, an Alexa XT with an Ingenue uh, Optimo Zoom. And um, we have the extendable arms fully all the way out. And we do have, um, let me unlock the tilt axis here. Um, we, we do have clearance on the tilt down on the top, but just barely. And we're just barely touching on the back. Now, so what would easily fix this is like our Cinemilled Pro Dovetail and some counterweights. So that would be an easy fix. Um, so that's one route you could go, but that is a problem we found. You know, obviously the arms do extend, but there is def a definite limit to how far they go out. I, I haven't actually measured, but I don't know, maybe it's like 50 millimeters somewhere around there. So it is long enough so that you can do things like this. Um, it would be nice if it was maybe a little bit longer, but so you can never make us happy, right? But um, you can do things like this. And of course, within this envelope, you can fit a lot of uh, cameras and lenses. And so um, it's just great that it's able to do that. You know, one of the really smart things they did um, is the actual shape of the, the roll arm. It's kind of a trapezoidal um, shape like this. And that's smart and better than a tube um, in the sense that all the forces acting on this arm are sort of trying to bend it. And so a more rectangular shape, or in this case, a trapezoidal shape like that, you actually get a lot of strength just from the shape of the arm. So it's a really nice, um, instead of just using a regular carbon tube, like pretty much every other gimbal out there does, um, they went with a proprietary shape that in this case, engineering wise, makes a lot of sense. Um, so. Anyways, the arms go out. It's nice. You can um, be able to do things like this. Uh, moving on to the next issue is the height of the cage itself. Um, you can kind of see here that um, we're at the limit. Now, I don't know if they intend to make extensions, but Cinemilled certainly will. We make these tilt upper tilt arm extensions for the tilt of gravity. So it's something I encountered on the tilt of gravity also when working with these big cameras. So we will be making a uh, upper tilt arm extension so that you can run these up here. And let me just say that you pretty much cannot use, especially on a heavy setup like this, without this top crossbar. The stiffness and the strength of the motors involved, just, you know, when I have this on here in a second, you'll see if I just loosen this, all hell breaks loose. It starts to vibrate it and complain. So having this, uh, having an extension for this is gonna, really going to be crucial. Um, and so right now we got away with it because I took everything off the top of the Alexa and try to make it as short as possible. But my guess is that you're going to run into this problem um, more often with other cameras also. So there's plenty of tilt arm length to balance the top and bottom weight, but there isn't in order to always have a nice secure uh, top cage um, in, in effect. 
So uh, we'll probably be making these upper tilt arm extensions. Um, there's, it's a little tight side to side, but honestly, there's plenty of room there. You can definitely, you know, um, offset certain weight. And of course, if you're using our pro dovetail, you can screw in counterweight and offset that and use the way you mount the counterweight will help you um, balance it side to side if you run out of room in the cage. Um, the other thing here is, so I, you know, I got it pretty well dialed. Um, let me demonstrate. So uh, if I offset the pan axis here and I tilt up, notice it's not swinging wildly in any direction. Now it is not in perfect balance. Um, you know, proper pan balance is something that is always tricky for manufacturers to achieve because I don't think they actually envision us using such big, large, heavy payloads. And of course, if I actually wanted to shoot with this, I would have media, I would have a focus motor, I would have a transmitter, um, I'd probably mount the battery somewhere else or try to power it from the, from the Ronin itself. But it's only gonna get heavier from here. And, you know, so what I'm getting at is, which with what you see here, I am maxed out on my pan adjustment. So I have this as far back as it will go. So while they did give us a really long pan arm, we're all in, but they also extended this. So we get into a little bit of a problem where it's not what I would call in perfect balance. So if I put that angle there, you see right there, it, it, uh, it's dropping. So, and I can't adjust it more because I ran out of adjustment. So um, this, this is probably good enough to shoot with because these motors are so strong. But um, personally, if I'm doing car work, you know, especially with a heavy camera like this one, I'm going to want to get this perfect because that's really important. So um, you can expect Cinemilled, you know, we make a pan counterweight mount for every gimbal out there, Movi Pro, Ronin, Ronin M. So we're going to make a pan counterweight mount for this which you'll also be able to mount other accessories like a video transmitter and stuff like that. So everything that you mount then to the pan axis increases the weight, which then you can start regaining some of this adjustment and allows you to balance this heavier weight. Um, you know, other than that, you know, front to back balance, we pretty much nailed um, side to side. We also nailed, let me unlock that one right here. Where is it? There we go. And there you go. It doesn't, flop to one side or another and in fact if we put an angle look at that it doesn't even move so um, you know side to side is fine uh, front to back is also fine the only thing I'm fighting right now in this particular setup is that I'm not actually threading this into the top of the camera so I'm getting it's shifting a little bit so obviously if I had a little bit better setup but as you can tell it's a tiny bit off, but it's, it's, not, it's not bad at all. There you go. So it's not moving. Um, what's happening is as it shifts forward, it's slipping a little bit because I'm, I'm not actually bolted down to the top of the camera. Um, but obviously, if this was a real shoot, I'd, put a, I'd have them put the cheese plate on here and then I'd be able to attach the top uh, mount to it. But uh, it's enough for me to be able to demonstrate. Um, the other thing you'll notice here, of course, is our Cinemilled gimbal dock. I know all of you guys have been uh, inundating me with responses, with questions about when can I get the gimbal dock? When can I get it? Um, I'm working on it. We've been a little bit backed up at the shop. Um, I'm trying to improve on the design a little bit. There's going to be a few uh, upgrades from what you see here. But the main important thing is you can easily see how with a long lens, um, you just extend these arms out and then the lens doesn't hit the stand. So kind of a key point. I wouldn't have been able to balance this without the Cinemill uh, gimbal dock. So that's coming soon. Just bear with me. Um, we're a small shop and we're trying to do a lot <laughs> all at the same time, but we're getting to it. Uh, I'm just trying to refine the design and um, it will be available shortly. Most of it is finished, but uh, yeah, crucial little piece of gear here. Obviously, we also um, we also um, shorten the distance between the the gimbal dock arms here because I'm running a, a shorter 12 inch top tube on my uh, Cinemilled Pro Ring. And um, naturally this whole setup is pretty heavy as you would imagine. And so I got a 
a ready rig here that the guys at Radiant let me use because my ready rig is out on a rental. Um, so let's fire this up and, you know, so I kind of went over the basic uh, little problems I encountered while trying to balance this. Um, but um, the, real, the real test of metal here is how it reacts when it's turned on. And that's really where, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, Movi Pro, Ronin 2, and I'm like, honestly, it's a completely different ball game because Ronin 2 is, it's a muscle car, it's horsepower. So the size of this motor really, this is, it, it's where it shines in, compar in comparison to a Movi Pro. So obviously this wouldn't even fit on a Movi Pro, but I've actually had like 30 pounds of weight on a Movi Pro. That's that uh, picture you can see on our Instagram. We have a little video of us with the Aerie 235 with the, with the uh, anamorphic lens and our, and our Pro dovetail with all the counterweights. That was 30 pounds on the Movi Pro. And so while the Movi Pro can handle that weight, it's, it struggles a little bit. Um, but at that, it starts to get sluggish and whatnot. And with, even with all this weight, you're going to see this Ronin just, it's a champ. It just pans and stops on a dime and reacts to your input. It's really amazing. And so let me give you guys a look at that and, uh, and then I'll pick it up and we can do some things. And, um, I mean, the other thing also is, is I'm going to show you how it reacts to the wheels, even with all the weight on it, to the alpha wheels that you can now get from our website. So let's, let's turn this thing on and, uh, give it a try. Actually just going to start by it's on right now. Um, I was just sort of tuning it and I did an auto tune. Um, and then I sort of bumped up the acceleration and I bumped up the stiffness just a little bit. And then I also bumped up um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, where is it, the speed, the general speed of the motor. Um, I turned down the dead band. And, um, you know, one of the things I uh, wanted to show is my ultimate test that I always repeat to people is just turn the power off from your gimbal and it should not move a millimeter. As you saw, the power is now dead and nothing moved from where, it, where it's at. So that means you're in balance. Um, so that's where we want to start. Before we start experimenting with things, we want to make sure we have a really good balance. You know, see like that, nothing's moving. Um, like I explained a, a, a minute ago, uh, the pan balance is a tiny bit off because we're, we're maxed out. Um, but um, there's nothing I can do about that today. Um, and I'm just relying on the sheer power of the Ronin 2 to sort of get me through the fact that it's just a tiny bit out of balance. Um, all right, so I just turned it on. So let me just double check here my settings. All right, so I just turned this on and uh, we've already sort of tweaked some of the settings here. And um, let's pick it up and see what it does, right? So you'll notice that even though it's really heavy, it's responding really well. You know, so very little to no tail wagging. I can dial out a lot of that tail wagging. Um, probably my stiffness is a little bit too high. My acceleration might be a little bit too high. Um, but the other really interesting thing that I wanted to show to people is that I'm going to switch this into overslung mode real quick. And one of the things you've seen maybe on YouTube is a video of me at NAB with the Ronin 2 mounted on my Steadicam and I'm, I'm twirling it around and demonstrating the fact that the roll axis on the Ronin 2 rolls 400 degrees in either direction. So if you don't have a Steadicam, how does that benefit you? I'm going to show you right now. So basically, if you go into over, over mode, Right, there we go. So that's over mode. What, something's gonna happen that all you guys are very familiar with, which is the camera's upside down, right? So one of the great things about the Ronin 2 is it has a uh, push mode where you can just push things and it'll stay wherever you left it. And it ha it, you can just grab it, the roll axis now. And there you go. I didn't grab it really well, but it reoriented itself and now the camera is not upside down. 
because you can roll 360, um, you can just grab it and make it level. And now uh, the camera is in the right position, even though it's an Alexa with the zoom. Um, you can just grab it and reorient the camera so that it's facing the right direction. And um, to, go, to go back to normal, you just do the same thing. Oh, you've got to go the right direction. So um, I actually want to grab this side. And there you go. And it takes a second to rear into yourself. And then we can go back to the regular mode. So, um, you know, I'm going to put on the ready rig. I'm going to try it out a little bit. Um, but really, the, the sort of the big test is just how much, how well it responds to input, even with a really heavy payload. Um, let me bring in my alpha wheels here and now let me turn them on. And so I got the Alpha Link XR, like I've demonstrated in other videos. And there is, oh, there we go. Okay. So there it is. You can see it's very responsive. And of course you can go into the re remote menu right here and I can speed things up. Let me see, let me go here to, let me go to tilt. And right now the speed is at 50. So I want to, I want to bump it up to like an 80 and smoothing's at a 15. So you can see now if you're, I don't know if you can see my hand and the camera, but it's a lot closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I actually turn up the speed a little bit more, we can go to 90, all right? Let's go to 90. It's pretty close now to one-to-one. -to -one. Up, down, up, down, see? So it's pretty amazing. Um, the smoothing right now, see, the reason I wanted to show this is so that even with a lot, when it, even though the weight is balanced, there's a lot of mass to it. So smoothing becomes an important, um, an important setting. Um, if I actually turn it down, it's at 15 right now. I'm going to go down to a five. Um, you're going to, you're going to, you can see how hard it hits the brakes. See that? I don't know if you can hear it, but it's actually like, so it's amazing that, you know, I'm so used to the, the Ronin one where you would go from 30 points to 50 on an adjustment and you really, you really wouldn't feel a change. On this one, you go from 15 to five and you see a huge change. So let me go back up to, to 15 and you see it's a lot smoother. And if I go up from there, let's go to a 20. And now it's slowly app applying the brakes and smoothing out your stops. So the, what I'm really trying to point out here is how responsive the numbers on the settings are on the Ronin 2 that I've found so far. You know, obviously things can change in future builds, but Right now, that's one of the things I'm really happy with, with the Ronin 2 is, is just, I can make a change and it reacts differently. And so I can tune it to different, um, different, uh, situations. Um, let me, let me mess with the pan here. Let's go and let's see the pan. So. I can, I have my hand on it. I can actually feel it when it changes direction. When I go from right to left, it, it, it even jerks the, the handlebar a little bit. And only reason why I point that out is just how much motor power um, it has so that I'm actually like feeling that actually happen. Um, this is really gonna come into play, uh, obviously with these really big cameras, but especially if you on a really windy day at the end of a 60 foot crane or you're in a, on a you have it mounted to a vehicle and you're going 60 miles an hour with a big camera and a big lens 
it can power right through it and uh, because it's got the horsepower. So of course we're just in a rental house playing with a remote control stick. But of course the next video and the next test is going to be out there um, on a vehicle in the wind going fast and seeing how it pans left and right when we have it perpendicular to the wind um, to really sort of test you know how good this thing really is but I can tell you from sitting here and from experience that what I'm feeling is uh, is really promising you know the way it reacts is pretty amazing um, so anyways let me turn the wheels off here and we're back to this mode. So let me throw on the uh, ready rig. Now, yeah, so this is not my ready rig. This is one that's been generously provided by Radiant Images um, since they're hosting us here today. And um, it doesn't have the pro arms. Now, normally, if you watch a lot of my videos, um, oops, where did the strap go? Here we go. If you watch a lot of my videos, you're going to notice that um, I've actually used this um, sort of standard version of the Ready Rig quite a bit in just about all of my videos. Um, I, uh, I did that sort of on purpose to sort of to demonstrate that you don't need the Pro Arms to do a lot of the things I do in my videos, but they're certainly helpful. Um, when it comes to a really big build like this one, um, they're really necessary and it becomes apparent really quick the problem is we have the pan arm adjusted all the way back um, i'm very quickly going to run into my stomach and it's also really heavy and with the ready rig the heavier it is the shorter you got to make this arm so the closer it gets to your body um, with the pro arms it's not a problem because you just it's got two stages you loosen the second stage you extend it out and you can actually fine tune where the load is away from your body independent of the strength of what's going on. So uh, I wish I had the pro arms today, I don't, um, but that's not a problem. Uh, nice thing about the gimbal dock for you ready rig users out there is I'm sure you've experienced trying to pick up the, um, trying to pick up the, the ready rig off of a stand and it'll try to lift off, especially when you have a lot of strength. And since I have the locks, it doesn't let it lift off. So it doesn't go flying. I don't have to bend over as much. And it's only when I unlock that, that I, it allows me to pick up. So there you go. And um, there it is, nicely fine-tuned. And you can see here, even though it's really heavy, um, because I'm using the spindles. Um, let me tighten that up a little bit. Because I'm using the spindles, um, I can fine tune the effort it takes to tilt. So, boom, so I can do, I can do this to that. So that really sort of demonstrates So I got it to wag a little bit there, which we don't want, but a lot of um, the vibration that you might be seeing here is because we have the stiffness um, turned up. And once again, I didn't have a pick point at the top of the camera to you know, strengthen the structure. So I sort of just pushed down on this as much as possible to apply pressure to strengthen the, 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 the grip that the gimbal has around the load but it is causing a little bit of a, of a rattle. But you can see that this responsiveness out of a really big setup is really great. Especially, oh, now I got it to wag. So of course there's a limit. And I would imagine if I had a shot like that to do I can kind of tune it to be able to handle that. Right now, I just sort of threw the numbers around real quick and got it to a place where it was responding well, but I by no means fine-tuned it. Just how responsive the tilt axis is to input, even with a very heavy long load. And so 
as you can see here you know when you compare this with other gimbals it's really um, and yeah I can go even a little faster let's speed that up some right there so and then of course we can do one of these So, I mean, that kind of performance with a load this big and this long is pretty amazing. And it's, in, it's indicative of the performance that this whole system has. So, needless to say, I'm pretty impressed uh, that I could do, you know, things like this and sort of manhandle a camera this big and this heavy. So, I mean, I'm pretty impressed. And um, I can't wait for all of you guys to get your hands on one and uh, start pushing it to its limits. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to doing a few more tests like this. Um, feel free to write in the comments some of the things that you guys would like to see me test. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be until DJI releases and starts shipping the Ronin 2. So I know a lot of you guys are waiting and are holding your breath and waiting for it. So if you have any uh, questions, any sort of things that you would like for me to try out with it, um, just let me know and maybe on our next, next test we'll, we'll demonstrate that for you. Um, one of the things I wanted to do and we'll do here in a little bit before we end the video is to actually mount this to a tripod and do the same tripod test I did in my uh, tilt of gravity video where we actually hard mount it to a tripod in overslung mode and we just pan the tripod. Because, um, you know, panning on a single axis is really a good test of the responsiveness. You know, obviously in the real world, <clears throat> when you pan, you sort of pan with your body a little bit. I know I certainly do. You certainly do if you're using a ready rig, you know, as part of the technique it's a little bit more effective um, just twisting it is not that you know it, it's obviously required in certain situations but I get better results by body panning by combining both basically but uh, we'll do the tripod test um, before we go hey everyone so here we are with the uh, O'Connor 2575 it's pretty much the most popular common tripod on a professional movie set and what we did is you know, Cinemild has our universal mounting plates. So, you know, we make a universal mounting plate for Ronin, for Movi, for Tilta. Uh, and of course, we made one for the Ronin 2. And um, while it is finished and uh, we've made a bunch, um, it's not available just quite yet because we heard a rumor that the uh, mounting design may or may not change a little bit. This is a prototype, right? So, um, needless to say, you know that's our number one priority as soon as uh, we get a actual production shipping unit in our hands and uh, we can make sure it's not going to change and um, that'll be probably available right away um, so this of course allows you to mount it onto a tripod like we have done here um, it allows you to mount it to a um, crane a rc car uh, cable cam all sorts of crazy awesome stuff so um, the reason I have it on a 2575 is that it really gives you a good view of, first of all, how reactive the Ronin is. It's, um, you'll notice it, it's almost panning along with my handle. It's almost, I wouldn't say it's one-to-one, -one, but, you know, when you come to gimbals, I would say it's as close that I've ever seen. It's the most reactive I've ever experienced especially with this much weight on it. I mean, that's really the big thing that I don't want to downplay right now because, I mean, that's really the bombshell this moment for me is I have a, you know, an Alexa XT, um, or actually it's a plus, but anyways, it's a heavier than a regular classic Alexa and the Ingenue Zoom lens on there. And um, look at that. It's, it's almost panning along with the tripod head 
And so we're going to try to get you a top-down shot so you can get a really good view of what I'm saying. Um, the other interesting thing, like I demonstrated before, um, the Ronin 2, you know, the camera's upside down, so you can just grab it and reorient it in any position you want to. So you don't have to break out an iPhone, you don't have to go into the menus, you just grab it, roll it over. Now you don't have to flip the image or anything like that. So that's actually a really cool feature. So what I'm gonna do here now is, um, let me turn on the, let me point the camera in the right direction. Right there. And um, so it's in line with the uh, tripod head here. And um, you know, you can see it's pretty much following my input. I mean, really closely. There's not a lot of deviation. The dead bed is really accurate. Um, I can even go faster and it's keeping up. I mean, it's pretty amazing with this much weight, with this much length, because you've got to remember when weights get really long and you have the pan arm extended all the way out like this, um, there's a lot of leverage in play. So the fact that I can pan at that speed is pretty amazing. So I mean, here we go. Look at that. So pretty awesome. Um, you know, I'm going to try to get you a top down shot so you can see just how much the call this the pan arm of the gimbal is actually keeping up with, say, my tripod arm uh, input handle. Um, and, you know, what I want to point out also is that I can make it wag. So a lot of this has to do with the sort of the technique. You know, I'm an experienced operator. I'm a SOC. I'm a union operator. And I have a little bit of that finesse. And so I can achieve a really fast pan, just like right here, without getting that wag at the end. See? So, you know, one of the things too is if I needed to go faster, I can just quickly on this touch screen here, go in, adjust a little bit of the settings to make smoothen them out a little bit so it doesn't stop as abruptly. But I just need to point out the fact that I can do that and see now there, there it wagged a little bit but I can do the same thing and apply and think about it a little bit more and it doesn't lag. So that's pretty amazing. Um, let me give you an even bigger input here. So I'm gonna do a 180 degree whip pan, like a whiplash. So we got a little bit of wag there. Let me do that again. So there you go. So one thing I, w I need to point out here is we're getting quite a bit of flex. We're on a, we're not on sticks right now. We're not on a dolly. We're on a sort of a bolted platform onto some, onto a rolling um, sort of track here at, at, um, at Radiant Images. They have these uh, tripod heads that you can roll around. And so it is a little sort of flexy. So the flex isn't coming from the Ronin. It's coming from the whole thing. So that affects us a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. So let's do another one here. So we've got a little bit of a wag there. Let's do that over again. There we go. So, so you can see, and you know, I mean, that's as close to a whip pan as we've we've ever gotten on a gimbal. Um, it's incredible performance. Obviously, if I had like a Red or an Airy Mini on here with a Zeiss Super Speed or something, I wouldn't be getting any tail wagging at all. Um, but let me go in here and, um, and try to get rid of some of that. Let's see here, pan. Um, let me... Turn. Let's turn down the speed a little bit and increase the acceleration. So the good thing is, like I, I pointed out earlier, the numbers actually do things now. And so you can actually sit here with a very controlled environment like a tripod head and experiment. And 
you'll be able to save profiles with settings. So you don't have to write it, write notes on a notepad. You can actually save them on here. Um, that's not active right now. I've been told that's what they're doing. That'd be really smart of them to do. Um, so if you know you're gonna have to do a whip pen, you, you can go back to the setting that you saved when you were testing here and achieve that. So let's see. So yeah, so it's a little bit better. See, no more wagging. And if I'm really abrupt, it comes back. But, I mean, amazing performance. So I'm going to try to now um, get a little bit of a... Uh, I mean, look, that's so incredible. So um, I'm going to now try to get a little bit of a top shot. And um, let's see what that looks like. All right, guys, so um, that's just, you know, the first of a few of uh, tests I want to do with the Ronin 2 and some big cameras. Uh, hopefully soon I'm going to do one in a vehicle, vehicle mounted with the wind and some other stuff going on. Today I just really wanted to try out a big heavy camera, a long camera, and show you guys, you know, some people have been asking me, oh, I want to see it panning on a tripod so it's pivoting off the same axis and not body panning, because that's kind of a cheat. Um, so anyways, I hope you found this uh, informational and uh, useful and uh, I'm really excited to see to get the Ronin 2 in everybody's hands and um, start making some products for it and really start pushing its limits and uh, I'm, I'm really excited for the coming year and all the cool things we're going to be able to do because of the horsepower this thing has. So. Uh, Let's get to it, let's get shooting. Thanks a lot guys, and uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to cinemill.com and buy any of all this stuff that we were talking about today, the universal mounts, the alpha wheels, you know, uh, all the, we're gonna be making all these extensions and all these parts. So cinemill.com for all your gimbal needs, and keep an eye out, out for us this year. We'll, we got a couple of secret projects in, uh, in the works, all right? All right, happy shooting.